Hi everyone! So I'm going to be coloring my uh, Yeti for Christmas image today and I'm going to start with the reds. Start with R32 on all of the places that I want to be red. So this is going to be the base coat. So I'm just putting it all over whatever is supposed to be red for me. I mean, you could make it any color you want. I chose traditional Christmassy colors. And you can see I'm not going right up to the edge of the Yeti's fur. Because I'm going to be putting a really dark red there, so I don't need to worry about that part right now. Just all over the red parts real quick. Santa's suit. The sleigh. Rudolph's harness. And don't forget his nose. I'm grabbing my R35 as the next shade. Leaving a little bit of edge lighting up at the top of that harness and at the bottom where the bounced light is coming from the ground which in my world is going to be very snowy and I'm just leaving the bottom edge of the sleigh showing some of that bounced light as well it's okay if it's not a perfect line across we can blend it out you won't notice I'm just going to leave the top part of this sled a little bit highlighted there with that R32 showing on the outer edge. Then it kind of disappears as it gets close to Santa and makes another little appearance at the top of that scroll. Leaving the top edge of his hat with that edge lighting as well. And his elbow, leaving it up there as well. The top of the crease, front of the arm. And these are just little ways you can help show dimension in your picture by showing a little bit of light that's hitting the edges. You can see it's already starting to take shape a little bit. Back of his Leggings. There we go. Next is R37. If this one doesn't give me a problem, I hope it doesn't. It was giving me a problem earlier today, so I was dipping it in the, in the blender solution to sort of get it moving a little smoother. I might have to re-dip it. You can think of these markers sometimes as very similar to watercolors in how they act and the blender solution as if it was water and sometimes when you dip your paintbrush when you're painting with watercolor in the water you're of course diluting the pigment so when you see your marker laying down you know kind of a gloppy shiny mess you know it's either time to clean the marker tip by swishing it around in the blender solution or even if you don't want to stop to clean your marker you can 
you know, just dip it for a few seconds. And it's just like you've dipped your paintbrush in water. You get a nice smooth blend after you do that. So I'm just thinking about where, you know, the light isn't hitting it quite as directly, so it's just starting to get darker. And that's where I'm adding these darker shades with my R37. Of course, it's going to be dark right in here, kind of hidden from view, and right under his beard. And into that front of his leg there. Now, if I just go back with my R35 and blend out the edges of these this R37. So I don't want to go right over the R37, but just at the outer edges where it meets the R35. You see how it softens the edge there? Takes the edge off, as they say. And just to um, further blend this, I'm going to grab R32, go back to that, <clears throat> excuse me, and right on the sleigh here where R35 meets the R32, I'm just going to soften that line up a little bit. And we get a nice blend. I'm going to do the same all along these lit edges here. And just see how it softens that line and it's not a sudden stop where the R35 begins. I think I'll do that right up here as well. All these little details, eh? They help make the picture stand out. Now, I need some good, solid shadows. So I'm grabbing my R39. It's going to be super dark. So I don't think where I'm Santa's hand is blocking some light right here, so there's a cast shadow from his hand. The cuff, back of his arm. And of course, under Yeti's arm. I'm just using the utmost of care now as I'm going around this fur because any little, any false moves <laughs> and you've got a mess to clean up in the fur and I don't want that. Yeah, the marker is a bit... Uh, it's a little bit sticky, so I'll try to remember that and stick it in the water in the um, blender solution next time. So R eighty nine. I'm not sure if I'm going to get away with using it now because I've got that sticky mess right there. I'm going to give it a try and we'll see what happens. I'll always I can always fix it. Oh, it's not too bad. This is a nice dark shadow. I 
There. Maybe a little bit of shadow with the R39. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in this blender solution just for a few seconds. And that's about all I need. And then right under this hat here where there's a fold, I'm gonna make that a little darker. And under his beard, I just darken that up a little bit and his beard will just stand out a little bit more. Right inside the crease of his pants there. And look at all that dimension already. Let's do Santa's beard. So I've got my W1. That's a warm gray. I'm just using the flick, little flicking motions here and just kind of going around the outside in towards the center. And then under the nose, you could put a solid little half moon, quarter moon shape there. And then just flick little lines out. I'm going to do the same thing, only with W3 now. Just mostly underneath. And then this very sparingly, and I'm using a really light touch, so it barely touches the page. If your marker is really juicy, this won't work very well. So this marker has been well used, and that's why it's easy to get these fine lines. Just a few lines there. And now he looks like he's got a gray beard. Now for the trim of this outfit, I'm going to use a set of cool grays instead of the warm grays, just to make it different from the beard. Don't have to put a lot of detail just something that shows it has some form, some shape. I like to put like a, a crescent moon shape on spherical objects like that pom-pom. And that gives it that rounded look. So that was C1. I'm going to go to C2. C I'm going to check C2 out, see what that looks like. Just adding it in little, tiny, sparingly places. <laughs> sparingly places. Yes, I'm reinventing the English language. <laughs> oh, it's just a bit darker. And now we've got some shape on his outfit's trim. Now let's give him some color on his face. E21. And I'm just going to leave a little shiny highlight on the top of his nose there. Don't even have to blend it out. Just leave it like that. And I'm shading with E23. Just right under the hat brim. That's all you need. Now Santa's face is done. Now onto his boots. I've got C4. And I'm going to leave a little shine patch right there. And another one on the heel right there. Go to C6, I'm jumping up by twos. Leaving that edge lighting at C4 there and not going right up to the edge also gives it some, helps give it some of that dimension that you're looking for. 
And I'm ignoring that back boot because I'm just going to use C10 on that later. Now we're up to C8. Just a little bit less of this one compared to the C6. Then I'm going to go back with C4 and just blend that a little bit. Where it meets that C6. And end it off with C10. So that back boot is C10. You could just use plain black if you want. And I'm just going to add a wee bit of it here in the crease going up towards the pants. And now we've got dimension on the boots. And let's see what's next. We can do the deer. So I'm grabbing my E21 again. And it can go all over the deer. I'm not going to put E21 on the chest or under his belly. I'm going to make that a little bit lighter. You can make this deer darker if you want. You can make it a nice dark brown. This is just the picture or the color I chose to do for this picture. But it's really up to you. You're the artist. These are just suggestions. This is just what I'm doing. I'm gonna grab R30 and just make his inner ear really pink. Now, let's see if we can shade with a little bit of, I think what I'll do is I'm gonna use my E23 to shade but I'm going to dilute it a little bit. Let me clean that up a bit. So E23, but dilute it just a wee bit. Because it's a little bit too dark. So there, that should be enough. And now every place that's down below the light, like the light is hitting up above, so... I'm just going to put this E23 that's been dipped. I might have to dip it again a couple of times. And that back leg, I'll just do the whole thing in E23. And you can hear me dipping it again. Let's make that squeaky sound. And while I've got this one in my hand, I'm going to work on these antlers. And just leave a little edge lighting up the top of them there, which I'll fill in with E21. All right. I just had to dip E21 a little bit because it was starting to get a little gloppy too. So this is to, to blend it all, all together. And there we go, we've shaded the deer. 
Oh, I hope that was in the screen for you. I might have gotten a little forgetful there. Sorry about that. Let's do his hooves with R20, E23, I'm sorry. And I just leave a little space like that to make it shine. You see how that makes it look like a light is shining on it and it's reflecting this beautiful shine spot. Now he's got shiny hooves. Oh yes, I forgot about the antlers. I need to go back in with E21. We don't really want those to be white. There we go. Okay, let's do that deer's tummy. So Y R thirty over all that fur. And his teeth. And now W2 for some shadow. Hope it's not too dark. If it is, I'll stop and get the number one. Oh, it's good. We are good. It just puts a little bit of shadow there. So it's not so stark. There we go. I'm going to grab that YR30 again. I'm going to go on the bells and its teeth, the horns, and the toenails. Now, for this Yeti, I'm drawing a blue face with white fur. So I've got my B41, which I'm gonna put on the face. Leave a tiny little spot on the nose for a shine. And I'll do the same thing on the fingers. I'm gonna leave a little shine spot as well. Just on the thumb and the forefinger, though. See how that spot already looks like it's catching the light and it's just a reflection of light. Just to give your pictures that something extra. It's kind of tricky on these ones. Now we're not leaving any highlights on the feet down here because they're turning away from the light that's coming from above. We might want one right here. We could do that. And then this hand has little highlights on it too on each finger. At least the first three anyway. Now B93 is my next shade color for this blue. A 
What's a shadow up here underneath these bangs he's got? I'm leaving a little edge lighting under these toes. See how it's, it's like a sphere. This toe is so round. So again, it's getting that a little bit of a crescent moon shape. You see that? And here as well. Uh oh, my marker needs a little dip. I need to take it for a dip. Okay. This marker is going to cause a problem unless I do something. So, I'm getting my blender solution again. Just a few drops. And then dip that marker. Now it should be good. There we go, all clean. Now, if we go back to, oh, got to do the hand on this side too. I'm going to go back to B41 after this and blend, blend that out. Now, what's going to make this really pop is if I add a little bit of that B95, uh, which I'm going to do after this. Just in some very tiny places, but it'll make all the difference. Being careful not to go over those little highlights. Okay, there's my B95. So where the toes meet, we've got these dark cast shadows here. One toe is casting a shadow on the next one. And let's see here. Let's make this nice dark shadow here, which this foot might be casting on that foot. And then right under the toes is a nice dark shadow too. There we go. You see how made, that made a huge difference? And right in here, there would be hardly any light coming in here. And right under those bangs, And, oh, we didn't blend out this hand. We need to do that. So I'll grab the B41 and get that little hand we missed. There we go. Oh, and right under the nose. That nose is casting a shadow. So this is B95 again. There we go. Awesome. So now all we got to do is that fur. All right. So I've got my C1. And let's work on that fur. So just wherever, oopsies. 
wherever you see those lines I've created for the locks of fur, sort of just follow them and then move in towards the center. So they kind of go around. Right here, just following along those fur lines, kind of spiral around. And make a shadow down in here. Under the horn, it's going to be casting a bit of a shadow. And we can actually do a little shadow right on the horn too. Let's follow the shape. But I'm not going all the way up to the top. No need. And let's see, underneath this head fur, I'm going to be putting a shadow just to show it's separate from the back fur. Some lines will, will be long and some will be short. Some will be fat and some will be skinny. And that's what you do when you want to vary it and make it look really furry, furry, furry. They're not all the same. Again, this marker is older, so the tip has been able to be worn to the point where it's, uh, I can make tiny little lines. I don't know if you can do that when a marker is full of ink and brand new tip. It can be very thick. a little bit of an advantage to having older markers, I guess. So I'm being careful not to go over the entire image because I still want them to look white. So I'm leaving a lot of areas uncolored. Otherwise he'd look like a gray Yeti instead of a white Yeti. All I need to do now, I think, is I'm going to grab a BV20, which is a little bit darker, and it has a bit of color, a little bit of violet color, which I like for the Yeti, especially because he's got this red Santa suit near him and the red sleigh near him, which would be casting a little bit of red color into his gray white fur. He could be reflecting that color. So BB20 has enough red in it that it actually gives that appearance. Can you hear my doubles? Dot and freckles, they must have heard something. So I'm concentrating darker shadows right where, you know, like say his arm meets his foot or his beard sort of curves away from the light down into under his tummy. Just wherever it makes sense where it would be a little bit darker. Right under this, these locks of fur up here. And just a couple up on his head. Hmm. Oh, a little bit 
of shadow on Rudolph's ear with that BB20. I think I'm just going to brighten up that inside of his ear. That R32, I don't like how that turned out. That's better. Well, what do you think? Not too bad. Not too bad. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy holidays. I hope that you guys keep making cards and having fun. Bye for now.